My name is Thorsten Norgaard, I'm a Danish photographer, I travel the world taking photographs and teaching photography. Today I'll talk about being a fly on the wall. You probably heard the expression being a fly on the wall and in many ways for me that is the essence that is the most joyful thing about being a photographer to be part of an event actually not be in the event, but be the observer of it and the one recording it. Below the video here is a link to a free ebook you can download right now. You can even stop the video right now, so you make sure that you download the book, it's free, and it's about some of the greatest photographers, uh, how they photograph, why they photograph, and what they photographed, and the history of photography. And also, I tell something about why do I photograph and how do I do it. One of the things I realize is my favorite thing about being a photographer, and that is being the fly on the wall. And that's an old expression, it's a hundred year old expression. Uh, somebody mentioned it the first time and now it's an idiom, it simply just means that you are the observer of something. And of course there's many ways you can be a photographer, you can have a studio and you can have people come in and you can be very noisy and everything, but my preferred way of photographing is actually to be a fly on the wall. I did a, uh, a interesting trip in Germany. I went to Hamburg and Berlin and I followed uh, Juliette Lewis. Uh, she used to be an actress, well she is still an actress, but she was very known as an actress and then she turned into musician and toured with her band uh, Juliette Lewis. So I was following uh, backstage and rehearsals and the concerts and everything and trying to capture, uh, well I guess She's a very interesting personality, that's what you see in the movies, that this is an interesting person to look at. So that was kind of what I wanted to do. Uh, of course I wanted to have some rock and roll and music and all this, uh, tour life and everything. But, I, but mainly I wanted to have moments of, this is very Julie Lewis. And she's an interesting one because she's very alive and she will make uh, things happen for the camera. Uh, but I think I succeeded and you could say the, the, the most ideal comment I got was when I was in her green room or her makeup room before a concert. She was sitting in a sofa with her then boyfriend and I was, I was just sneaking around with the camera all the time uh, behind, uh, behind the stage or in the dressing rooms and somehow I, had, <laughs> I was just sitting in a corner and then I took photo of her and her boyfriend kissing in the sofa. And then I get up and then Juliet says, wow, you're really good at this. We completely forgot you were there. So that's, that's what you want to hear and that's the type of photograph that you want. And it doesn't matter if it's a great photograph or not, but that is the circumstances that is the ideal for being a fly on the wall. So a fly on the wall, I think this talk goes in the direction of this is a style of photography. This is not studio photography, this is not having people posing. There's actually no direct communication with the subject. Uh, one of the, a very big project I did was I went to Southeast Asia in uh, 2005 after the tsunami. The tsunami hit uh, Sri Lanka, India and, and other places. Uh, so I went to Sri Lanka and also went to uh, India and I toured around for three weeks. I had like 25 kilos of cameras with me and God knows how many rolls of films. And I even had to stock up film in, uh, in India, which was kind of interesting because I needed high quality slide film. Uh, where do you find that in a, a fairly small city? But I did find some, they were only a few years old, but I found some boxes I could keep shooting. Uh, but what I was doing there was one thing I came there to help with whatever I could help with. And it turned out that what the type of help that was what needed somebody to be in charge of collecting all the photos because there was a lot of volunteer ministers who had traveled from Germany, US, Australia, everywhere to these countries to help out. Uh, and it was very interesting because it was uh, normal people, students. Uh, I remember one guy from Germany close to the, to the Danish border, he uh, sold Christmas trees. So he just left the company and his uh, partner had to take care of it, he just decided I'm going to go to Southeast Asia 
and help these people with whatever I can help them with, rebuilding, uh, whatever. So one thing was that they needed somebody to collect all of the photos that had been taken by those volunteers on the cameras and the phones and whatever, uh, and kind of catalog it and send it to the headquarter in uh, Los Angeles. So I did that, and then I also went on different trips around to take photographs of whatever activities was happening. Um, and that is an interesting thing, because here you have something that has happened that is kind of very strange for other people, but it also has to communicate. And at some point I had to make a decision, what is it that I want to communicate? Uh, I didn't arrive uh, in the days after, which meant that there wasn't any dead people floating around. There had been a lot of dead people floating around, but there was no dead people around when I came. So I had ruins and I had uh, kids that didn't have schools. I had uh, uh, fishermen that didn't have their boats. So that and the, the railroad was gone and the road was gone, you know. Lots of chaos that had to be rebuilt. And the thing I decided to focus on is like, I want to focus on how strong these people are, that they want to rebuild the country. And actually one of the biggest concerns for the people in both Sri Lanka and India was, how can I get my kids back to a normal life? How can I get a home for them? And how can I mainly, how can I get them to school? So some of the first projects was uh, tell, tents put up as schools and then rebuilding of real schools and rebuilding of houses, uh, railroads and everything. So I had to illustrate that. Uh, so I didn't go around and photograph a lot of ruins and hopeless people and sad people. I tried to photograph the hope of it that uh, people who has a will to overcome this and that's the only way there is, is to how to overcome it. And of course also I had to show the volunteers who all came from the Church of San Toldi, I had to show uh, their character and what they were doing and, and even you could say you don't see a lot of movement in the picture, you still have to tell a story that it goes from here to here and this is what's happening. In any case, so that is also being a fly on the wall uh, in an interesting way because uh, you have to tell the truth, you have to show the truth, and you can't arrange it. So you have to find a way, a, a way of language to do this. And you could say part of my language was to decide, okay, am I going to do a book with this? Uh, so I did a photo book and also did uh, five or six different slideshows uh, and got some amazing soundtracks from some great musicians to put on these slideshows. So I could go do lectures or show those slideshows and you could say the idea is that it's not just one picture that tells the story, but it's a series of pictures of maybe 30 or 60 or 120 pictures in a book or in a slideshow that tells a story and that combination of those pictures tells the story. And I did also, uh, I had an interesting opportunity because I traveled around with the president of the Church of St. Holdi, Hebo uh, who was the president back then. Uh, so I got to take a lot of photographs of him and how he cared for uh, the volunteers and how he interacted with religious leaders and government and, and everybody, uh, and everyday people. Unfortunately, when the, the first draft of the book was edited, it was all shot on film. So I went back after three weeks and I spent actually six months uh, developing, scanning, selecting, producing books and slideshows. So it was quite a project. Uh, but when I had the first uh, test print of the book, a digital print, uh, there was just too many pictures of the president of the church and that took away from the story about all the volunteers. So those pictures simply had to go out and I, I think there might be one or two pictures left of him, but that was a great opportunity to follow uh, a president. I've also done a lot of uh, music photography and that is a very interesting thing to do. So for example, I will do, uh, for a number of years I did uh, the Roskilde Festival in Denmark, that is one of the biggest European music festivals, if not the biggest, uh, and there's like different stages. And it's basically a bunch of people living in tents and participating in concerts and this outdoor life for five, six days. And it can be rain or it can be sunshine or it can be whatever. 
Uh, but one thing for sure is there's a lot of people and there's a lot of music. Uh, so one thing is I would, because I was press, I would live in, in the press city behind uh, the biggest state and I had a press tent and we even had a, a coffee bar. So we kind of lived uh, the luxury life compared to the people on the other side uh, attending the concerts who lived in tents or whatever they did. Um, so that meant that whenever somebody was performing, for example, Neil Young, I would be in front of him, uh, basically just below him, uh, together with maybe 15, 20, 30 other photographers. And then you have the first 15 minutes, the first three uh, songs, you can photograph and then you have to leave. And that is a very, uh, you could say it's a very extreme way to experience an artist and a concert because you're, it's like almost being on stage. So uh, that's quite an experience. But it's also another example of how do you portray something that's happening that you cannot interfere with. You cannot <laughs> tell Neil Young, hey, can you lean a little bit more out there and can you, can you yell a little bit more? It doesn't work like that. Uh, most of it are actually a little bit annoying that they have to be photographed, but it's part of how it's done. Uh, so you have this 15 minutes to tell a story that this is Neil Young in concert and this is what he's doing and this is how he is and everything. Uh, and of course you fight with the other photographs about the best spots. And it's very interesting that if you have the stage here and Neil Young is here and you have this spot here where the photographs are, everybody wants to be in this corner, just close to him. And that's actually not necessarily the best one, but it's kind of like everybody is taking a lot of photos and everybody pushes to get as close as possible. But you can actually get a great photo from over here. So, so I did that a lot. Uh, often I would follow the flow, take a bunch of photos, and then after so, some minutes of that, kind of, you realize, okay, this is going to be the same, the same, the same. I can do this for 15 minutes. It's just a lot of pictures. Uh, I got what I need. Let me step back and then look at it. What can I make out of this? What is he doing? What is his character? What kind of photo would tell a story? Um, also sort of like a fly on the wall. And then particularly also because it's a festival, what I would do is I would walk out several times a day, mainly when the sun got low uh, at the end of the day, not so much at night, but at the end of the day when the light gets really low, I would walk out and photograph the festival life uh, that people live. And that's also something it is actually very much flying the wall because I was not participating in the festival. I was participating in a press event on the, almost like a parallel life on the other side of a gate. Uh, and I would drive home and sleep in a real bed at night and I would come back next morning and photograph some more and edit in the press tent and go photograph, you know. Uh, so when I walked out there, it's kind of like visiting a camp of 60 or 120,000 people hanging out. Uh, waiting for the next music or eating or kissing or whatever they're doing, having fun, playing football. And that's what I would photograph then without becoming part of the event. Um, and of course I did a lot of that also with other concerts, bigger concert venues where you have uh, many stages. Um, and of, and you, of course you, you can't photograph everything so you have to make a selection. So, okay, Neil Young is there, Prince is there, Muse is this time, okay, and then there's Grace Jones, she's playing 10 o'clock over in stage 6. That's what I want to do. I believe I can make a great photo of Grace Jones. So that's kind of the thing, but it's just things evolving around you and, and you have to capture it. And it's something, it's just, I love to do this. I love to <laughs> be part of this in an extreme degree and observe a lot without actually being part of it. Uh, and you can say we go back to the president, uh, president photography you don't get to be part of deciding anything or have a say on anything. You're just a fly on the wall. And that's somehow that's great for me uh, because I want to photograph the atmosphere and I want to record for history. The last story I will tell about being a fly on the wall is uh, from the Clive Davis uh, Grammys party. It's a very exclusive thing. It's something that most uh, people in the music business will give the right leg and left arm to attend. And I got to attend it uh, first row. Uh, kind of a very strange thing, but again, a little bit like photographing Neil Young uh, on the big scene. You're just next to him uh, without actually being on scene on the stage, but you, it feels like you are on the stage. So here I was at Grammy parties and I, I had like uh, 
uh, like an M10P with a 51.4. That's all the equipment I had, and I had one extra battery. And then I was basically just kneeling down in front of the stage and walking around the room. So everybody else sits, have tables, and they get to sit and have food, and they stand up and clap, and they go mingle and talk to each other. And I'm kind of like this uh, mysterious person in the center of all this that doesn't really belong, <laughs> but still belong, and I can go anywhere. I can go closer to the States than anybody else. Um, and one of the reasons I, I, I thought of this is when people see this picture of uh, Jay-Z and uh, Beyonce, they say, wow, is that Beyonce? I say, yeah, that's Beyonce. Wow, did you talk to him? And it's funny that people ask, did you talk to him? Because no, I didn't. I mean, we, we, we see each other, but I'm not there to talk to somebody. I'm not there to get a selfie or get, uh, get some inside tips or anything like that, or ask her about who made her dress or something. I'm just there to photograph the atmosphere. So the less they notice me, the better it is. And there again, you're dealing with people that they don't post, but they know they're on camera. And they kind of know whenever they walk out the door, they might not be on camera, but they are being looked at, and people observe them and have an opinion or form an opinion on that. So you have to act in a certain way. You have to be that character uh, that you decided to be, or you're supposed to be, or you're expected to be. And you can say, generally, you should be a good example. So, but this again is something where I, I kneel in front of the stage and I'm like, I don't know, uh, free. Uh, feed from uh, the performer and uh, and sometimes you have performers that they see you and somehow they like your camera they like something about it. they think well, this is gonna <laughs> this guy knows how to make a good photo you can almost tell and then they do something and then of course you have to have the time you have to capture it and it's not always you get it because you're kind of living in your own little world here uh, not expecting them to actually interact um, but that's Brilliant. I love that. I love to be part of an event. I don't have to small talk with somebody next to me. Uh, I can leave whenever I want to. I can go to the other part of the room. I can do whatever and I'm still uh, part of it and I get to capture uh, all of what is of essence uh, in that room. And that, that's uh, excellent. That's just, that's perfect. That's how I like to photograph and you can say that is maybe what goes again. And even when I do portraits, I don't want the person, I don't instruct people to smile or anything. I want them to be themselves. And I look for the moment where they're really themselves and they're just hanging there. And then sometimes I will say something to them and maybe get some sort of reaction because maybe it is needed there. But generally the ideal portrait system is the person just sits and do their own thing, almost like a child sitting and drawing and they forget the world around them. That's the beautiful moment and that's basically always what I'm looking for. And that is the historic moment, that's the true moment. So that's all I had to say today about photography and I hope that inspired you. Uh, the idea of being a fly on the wall versus maybe lining people up and having them jump or smile or whatever or do makeup. All the other types of other photography you can do uh, the one that is closest to my heart is definitely uh, flying a wall, not being noticed, but being there at the most essential part of the events. As always, there's a link below the video with free stuff, so look there. And uh, till I see you next time, uh, remember to always wear a camera.